Good morning, people. Mike Martin's here with the Mike Martin's channel. And I want to thank everyone for joining me. And I actually want to do a really cool video today. I want to do a follow-up video on a video I made almost three years ago. Why I Top 10 reasons why I left Vancouver. Well, the last couple of times I've visited uh, Vancouver, either for business or just to go check something out or some sort of an event. And I am very happy living two and a half hours away from a major city. Now, today, I'm actually going to redefine and actually tell you guys the top five reasons why not to move to Vancouver. So as you go back as a visitor, you start realizing, you know, you know when you go on vacation, you get that feeling in you like, man, I'd love to live here. Man, I could, I could set my life up here. Man, this could be a great place for me to, you know what I'm saying? Well, this is the feelings I get and I get, a lot of people get uh, that agree with me on the first video that I did. I'll leave a link at the end of this video to the first video I did that has over 50,000 views. So let's start. I did the top five reasons why not to move to Vancouver. So this is my opinion. This is what I think. So no one freak out here on me and, 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 and bash me, okay? All right, here we go. Number five, very rude. Severe rudeness. I don't know why, but I don't know if people have lost respect for each other. But the amount of rudeness is absolutely phenomenal. The Vancouver glare, I don't know what other, if I, what other cities have the Vancouver glare. You're sitting in your car, you look over at the car just to see, you know, someone's there, look over, say hi or something, look over, and they look at you like this. It's like, wow, sorry for being here, sorry for being in your presence. And you get this vibe where it's like, from them. Pipe down, little man. You only exist out here because of me. You get that existence out here. Like, you know, you only exist out here because of me. All right. Uh, the, 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 the rudeness is phenomenal. Waiting for, I was waiting for an elevator and uh, w with the baby carriage. My wife, my other kids, were waiting for the elevator because we obviously can't take the baby carriage down the stairs. And we had five, six people run in front of us while we were there first and waiting. We had to wait another elevator. Then the ele other elevator, people jumped in front of us, and it's like, holy crap, it's like we don't even exist here. So it's like, I'm sorry for existing. That's another reason. Like, I'm sorry for my existence, for being here in your beautiful way. Anyways, rudeness, out of control. Number four, horrendous traffic. Nobody follows the rules. I don't know why, but nobody follows the rules while we're driving. They should have an I sticker, a sticker at the back of the car, or a sticker or a little flag that says I. That stands for entitled. Oh, this guy didn't even put his signal. He just changed lanes in front of me, almost hit me. Well, he's entitled to. He's allowed to. And remember, you only exist out there because of him or her. So, yeah. So, I, I, just, I just wanted to kind of throw that because the driving is the horrendous, the parking, the... I, I should have made I should have made videos like many many years ago when I was living in Vancouver. Should have made more videos of people trying to parallel park in front of my skyscraper where I used to live, my condo. I could look down and somebody was trying to parallel park for like forty five minutes. I'm I'm not kidding. I should have just got that on. T and they weren't learning to drive too, so I should have got the horrendous driving. Absolutely no respect for each other on the road. Everybody creates their own rules or renegotiates the rules as they go along. Number three. Hate, the hatred. You could feel it. It's almost like, like a sense of electricity in the air. You could feel the hatred around you. I, I every time I'm there, I just I feel. I don't know why. Maybe I'm just psychologically. But here in my small town, I'm not gonna lie. There's a person in town that hates me very much, uh, for opening a similar business as as his. You could watch the rare harassment series and you could see what what transpired from that. But but uh, that's fine, right? But. It's not every, you know, you, you see people, you say hi. Uh, I'm going to put a hidden camera on me, guys, a little one. I'm just going to go around saying good morning to everybody. Just to see you guys, the, re re the reaction from people. They're so happy to say good morning. They're like, good morning, how are you? Everybody is in such a great mood. And in Vancouver, what I noticed is when you say good morning to someone, they're like, what do you want? It's like, uh, don't talk to me type of thing. It's like, uh, you only exist out here because of me, little man. That's just how it is. Uh, in living in the city of Vancouver. That's just the way I felt. Like, people would always look for a way to kind of dish out on you for no reason whatsoever. 
like me and my friend one day he was longboarding i was i was mountain biking or just side by side going along the seawall and then some guy gets off his bike and this guy is like a well-to-do he looks like he's wanting to fight my friend for no reason whatsoever wanting to go nuts on him and wanting to fight him and this guy's like what the heck man we're just tr tr passing by on the, on the seawall and and just getting violent and wanting to punch him it's like wow and just you feel that from people you know what i'm saying so everyone's angry is number uh number three number two antisocial. if you're single single man and you're under 510 you're finished you're done you are done uh antisocial. very hard to meet anybody when i was living in vancouver i was single for so many years uh, and I would, you know, go to pubs, bars, libraries. Uh, I'd own my own store in the mall, so I'd be working my shift, and I'd meet tons of people coming in and out, people that were in the same genre as me, selling board games, tabletop games, card games like I have here in my small town. And I would, I, I, I would meet a lot of people in that genre, but they're not interested either because I'm too short or I'm in this genre. Because I've had women say, oh, I don't want to be associated or my friends to know that I'm associated with someone that's in this genre. So antisocial. And if you're single, good luck, Chuck. Because trying to meet somebody in Vancouver, good luck. Everyone I've met, I just didn't meet up to their standards or they're looking for somebody better than me. And they told me straight up, I'm looking for someone better than you. Good for you. Good for you. So the antisocial, yeah, you get on the elevator, people look at you like you burnt their house down, like you're slowing me down, you have to get on type of thing. It's like, wow, really? You just see it. It's there. It's like you're not making it up in your mind, but it's there, and it's like, wow. Okay, number one, no one has money. Everybody's house broke. Student loan debt, millennials are, are all complaining that they can't afford to live anywhere. The price of rent for an affordable one-bedroom in Vancouver, I think it's 1700 for what the city declares as affordable rent for a one-bedroom. I think it's seventeen or 2200 I couldn't remember. It was just an outrageous number. And a two-bedroom is like 3400 or something like that. That was a couple of articles I read here on this channel discussing that. It's pretty bad, guys. It isn't good. Um, this, this vicious... It's almost like like an entrance of 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 hate, evil, wickedness. And the small towns, they're still like original old fashioned Canada. Small towns, the small town I live in. Still got your tumbleweed rolling by. I, I actually saw tumbleweed a few weeks ago roll by my door. I'm not kidding, a big ball of tumbleweed just rolling by the door. That's how it is, you know? People uh, here say hi to each other. They respect each other. They love each other. They're here for each other. And I noticed that in our church, in our communities, and everything. But it's it's just really scary what's happened to the big cities. It's happened. It's I get feedback from people living in Melbourne, Australia. Same thing. Sydney, same thing. Auckland, same thing. Welland, same thing. Um, um, uh, London, same thing. London's transformed really bad. London's a few years ahead of all these other cities. Because they've 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 transformed their cities, uh, London's transformed its city first, and uh, in this huge transformation of change, I guess, basically impoverishing the the population is what's happening. So house broke, everybody's house broke. So everyone that bought into the housing market is rich on paper, but there's a lot of people that are holding the bag right now and owe more than what their homes are worth because of that slight declines every quarter. And but but things might change. We might get more people coming in with more money to help offset our housing market. Even though Canada's housing market uh, or revenue or big uh, wealth or or is all tied to housing. I think it's sixty percent and forty percent is small private business. So we're in trouble because before it used to be twenty percent or ten percent housing, and everything else went towards business and business creation and expansion. We used to be a, a nation of wealth building. Now we are a nation of debt building. We have our leaders out there telling us that, oh, young people can afford to go into debt. They're more comfortable with going into debt than, than earlier generations. No, they're more comfortable going into debt because they have no choice because they have to eat. So one is house broke. 
Not only house broke, no money. So no one has money and their house broke. You're seeing a lot of restaurants um, having a tough time filling positions for servers, waiters, and everything because they just don't make enough to live. Weighing tables. They don't make enough to live. So now you're starting to see occupancies where you have 11 people. I, I received an email last week from someone that there's 11 people in a two-bedroom condo, 11 living in there. Yes, the landlord doesn't know yet. But the neighbors on the floor are complaining because the door keeps opening every five minutes through the night, through the day, the slamming the door, and the elevator keeps coming up and making noise every five minutes, right? So let me know what you guys think. These are my top, top five reasons why people should not move to Vancouver. I'm, this is my opinion. This is what I think. I'm three years plus out of here, and man, it's so good. Everyone says hi to each other. Our church community is actually a church community, and everyone's there for each other. It's so good. I, 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 it's so, oh, I love it. I got my town stalker. It's like the best. It's like everything is the place. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> we got a um, local shop here where people come and hang out here. We come and sit here. We spend time. We talk, and we watch Netflix on the TV here and discuss what's happening, where things are going, where we think, uh, you know, we talk a lot about the big cities here. We talk a lot about the big cities and where they're headed. I know California is headed for uh, for a world of uh, disaster. So is Oregon and uh, and uh, Washington State. Oof. Parts of New York are, are, are like that too. Anyways, guys, let me know what you guys think below. Comment, rate, subscribe. Don't forget to find me on other platforms. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching and share this video. Get it out there. My videos are struggling to get over 100 views with 11,000 subscribers. When I had 2,800 subscribers, I would get a lot more views than I do with 11,000. Thank you, YouTube, for doing a good job. Thanks, guys, and God bless.